Now, if you know me, you know I'm not like a huge gear aficionado, but I am a sucker for what's in my camera bag type videos. So today I thought I'd do what's in my camera case. Now this isn't like something that I'm gonna bring on like an enjoyable photo shoot out in nature. This is what comes to work with me. I show up with my camera already built in one hand, rolling this case behind me. And what is in this case? This case is all the, like the little things and knickknacks and little tricks that I would need throughout the day on an actual work set. I thought it'd be interesting to just like quickly go through it. So sit back, relax if you're eating breakfast or some type of meal, hope you're enjoying it. So, all right, what do we got here? We got a Pelican 1510 case. This is like the pretty standard Pelican. I only bought it because everyone else has a Pelican. Like I don't think it wheels super well. Like I'm not in love with Pelican, but it's hard and it like gets the job done. I'm sure if you've seen other people's Pelicans, you've seen them all like stickered out. Not a ton of stickers on mine. As you see here, got a nice little Polar Pro sticker. Shout out to the guys at Polar Pro. Good guys. And then I have my name on it. That's me, Danny Gewurz. I have all my gear labeled because I bought a label maker. And once you buy a label maker, you will put labels on literally everything because it's so satisfying. It's good because like no one will be like, whose case is this? Clearly it's mine. I literally got this table for, so I could do stuff like this. And obviously it was a bad choice because it's squeaking so much. So let's, let's open this bad boy up and see what's inside. Nice organized. It usually starts the day that's organized and throughout the day it becomes much more chaotic. I'll come home from a shoot and it's absolute chaos and I'll have to usually just reorganize before the next shoot day. So as you can see in here, you got some nice like zipper pockets up top, some nice like bright yellow dividers that are like super comfy. Now when you buy this case, it actually comes with just like the foam piece that you like customize and build out. But I hate those because I feel like they just like fall apart so easily and I hate like the texture of the foam. I actually bought these separately, like this top part and this divider part. And I think I bought them off Amazon or something. It wasn't super expensive. Like I mentioned, you're not gonna find many camera parts in here because I like to show up to set with my camera already built because it just saves me at first like 15 to 20 minutes of showing up. Rather than building my camera, I'm able to focus on other things and just build my camera the night before. So I guess we'll just like go back and forth down the columns here. Or maybe we'll go like a snake draft. So the first thing we have here is this small rig uh, like monitor hood. This fits right over the LCD monitor of my Canon C200. Just if it's really bright out, I'm able to better see my monitor. That's all this really does. Next thing, I have this little filter pouch and these are all screw-in filters. What do I have in here? I have a black Pro Mist 1 8th. Then I have a black Pro Mist 1 4th, which rarely ever gets used. Just because if I'm ever using Promis, I'll use the 1 8th. I feel like 1 4th is just like a little too strong, but it's in here if I need it. Maybe like a dream scene or something that would come in play. Then I have like a little circular polarizer, which rarely ever gets used again, so. Then still in this top left pocket, I have little a black card, a white card, and a gray card. This is just for white balancing. What you do is you hold this up in front of the scene and then when you go into color correct, you can just use like the little eyedropper and just auto white balance using this card. Or you can auto white balance within your camera. I don't know who's like putting this around their neck, like who, who needs a, like this white card on deck, but it's got a lanyard if you need it. Some white gaff tape. I usually have both black and white gaff tape in here. Not sure where my black is. I feel like I probably left it somewhere. White in case you need to hide the tape on a white surface, black in case you need to hide it on a darker surface. But gaff tape really gets used for anything. I'm sure you know what gaff tape is, but yeah. Just a great universal tool. Moving on to the right here. Uh, this is like tools. Like, yeah, where my tools go. This isn't a tool. This is like a little clamp. I usually use this little clamp on like a, like to hold the monitor on my gimbal. Like I have my screwdrivers in here, like a little Phillips head, a little flat head, flat head to like tighten tripod plates, wherever you would use. What else we got here? 
Allen wrenches, just like a collection of Allen wrenches. Some, some screws in there. Have a little like multi-tool from my friends over at Image Revolver. They gave me this as a gift one year. Yeah, super fun little tool. I love things like this. Just like, mm. I also have this little tool from Small Rig. I thought I would get like a ton of use of this one, but the only thing I really use on this is this like flathead. Just cause sometimes the, the flathead on my screwdriver isn't like deep enough to get like stripped tripod plates. So this guy comes in handy, but I never really use like the Allen wrench tools on this just cause like it's such an awkward tool. And then I have a little flashlight just in case you know, I'm trying to get in my gear case and it's like a really dark area, able to use a little flashlight. So in this pouch is one of my favorite pieces of gear. It's got, I love how like, it's like a mini Pelican. Look at that. This bad boy holds my CFAS cards. I use my CFAS cards for both my Canon C200 and my Canon 1DX, which is this camera up top here that's filming the overhead scene that you're seeing. But yeah, this fits in so nicely. Protects your cards and your media. Ah, it's so compact. It feels great. Mmm. And I just like love this little slot that I made for it. A little lens inside this beautiful lens case with my beautiful puppy Sansa on the front of it right here. And no, this is actually not a lens case. This is a sock. Anna bought me this as a gift. Uh, I think for my birthday or Christmas or something, but it was like the worst fitting sock ever. And I had to use it because it's awesome. Like Sansa's face is perfect. So I decided I was gonna turn into like a little lens casing and it works great. Look at that, it's so cute. So inside of here, I just have a little lens. This is a 50 millimeter 1.8 or 1.4. Hardly ever gets used. I only really use this lens when uh, I'm putting it on a small gimbal like the Ronin S. I have another small lens like this, 24 millimeter. I'm actually using that 24 millimeter on the, the top camera right here. And that that lens also goes in this case. But yeah, they're like little flat light pancake lenses that I put on my camera if I'm putting it on a gimbal. Yeah, because they're super lightweight, they're super easy to balance the gimbal with. And yeah, they work great, so. They come with me in case I need to throw my cannon onto my smaller gimbal. So while we're on the topic of lenses, I'm gonna screw up our order right here and jump down a slot to right here. Ugh, it's one of my workhorse lenses. This is the Sigma 24-70 f2.8. And this lens is basically usually always on my camera. Right now on my C200, there's the 18 to 35 Sigma, which I use to film these talking head situations for YouTube. But if I'm shooting like run and gun documentary stuff or, or that sort of thing, this is usually the lens that I'm using. Moving on into our next compartment here. We have two walkie talkies. So walkie talkies are just like so useful for pretty much any shoot, whether you give a walkie to a PA you can always talk to them wherever they are. Like I'm usually the guy that gets yelled at for misusing the walkies on set because I'm a child. <laughs> These things are so fun. Whoa, fuck. Let's turn the volume down. Hey, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. These are uh, Midland walkie talkies. I know I had a gift certificate to REI and I didn't know what to buy, so I figured I'd buy some walkie talkies. <laughs> Next pocket here, nothing fun. Miscellaneous batteries. We have some fabric. And what this fabric is, is a nice sheet of bleached muslin. I love using muslin for diffusion. Just has like really soft look to it. I usually actually, for this talking head situation, I might throw it over my key light Right now, I'm not using it on my key light because I want to have it in my case, but yeah, just, just nice to have some fabric for diffusion wherever you go. You can get this for so cheap. Like I got this at Joanne Fabrics for like, I think it was like eight bucks. But I'm sure if you bought it off of like a film site, it would be like $200, but. Living within the same pocket are these little clamps. I don't know what they're called, but 
Like I'll use this to like clamp up the diffusion somewhere, or just like clamp wires onto a pole or just clamp miscellaneous things. As you can see here, I'm doing a, like, I figured like I'd just show you guys like a little BTS while I'm filming just cause it wasn't working out or I, it would be a clean background. So I just said, screw it. We're gonna have some things <laughs> in the frame. But one of these clamps is helping hold up my mic right here because my mic stand is broken, so. Yeah, a lot of uses out of these. All right, next pocket. I always like just having a stills camera on me wherever I go. Never know when the opportunity will arise for a break and there's a nice sunset or something. You're in a situation where there's just like horses in the sunset or get some like BTS around the set. This is a Fujifilm X100F. Just like such a, like a classic looking camera. Look at this. It looks like a film camera. Like people always ask like, what kind of camera is that? Is that a film camera? And they think I look cool, but now it's digital. I'm kind of a, just a poser, honestly. Take a little water break here. Mm. Ah, hear that? It's just like the universal sound of a good person. Like if you hear that sound, you know you're dealing with like someone who cares about the environment, using a reusable water bottle and not using single source or single use plastics. Yeah. It's the sound of a green thumb. Nothing interesting, a gold mount battery. Uh, it's a spare for my camera and my monitor. And also in here, I have a lacy rugged drive. I'm sure there's better hard drives out there, but I've always used these and always kind of never had them fail. So I'm gonna continue to use them. So that concludes our, our ground here, our floor section. So let's move on into our zipper pockets, which is far less interesting stuff, but ooh, this is a good one to talk about. These are little oil absorbing sheets. And what these are is if you have talent that you're interviewing or something and their face is really shiny and oily, you can go ahead and give them one of these and they can blot the oil off their face. I tend to be like the greasiest person on the planet, so if you use one of these on me, it's just like, ew, like, you can just see it. Like, you see that? Ugh. The sheet's like disintegrating. Also, in this pouch, we have microfiber cloth, just to wipe the front of the lens or whatever it may be. Always have one of these on hand. Then we also have a bunch of AAA batteries in here. Have you ever noticed that you just like, you always have AAA batteries, but you never have double A. I've just grown up always having a plethora of triple A batteries, like in my house, like never batteries for the remote, like no batteries that were useful. Just always triple A batteries laying around. So yeah, I figured I'd just have them laying around in my case because there's no use for them. <laughs> this next pocket right here, just like tripod plates. This is like for my Ronin S if I decide to use that. It's another tripod plate. And there's a tripod plate on the camera that I'm using, obviously. Pretty boring pocket. This long pocket right here, weird shape. Never really know what to put in it. So I just have a long SDI cable. And this is usually for when I'm flying my camera on a gimbal. I have a long SDI to connect my monitor to the camera so it's not pulling in any direction. And yeah, that's what that's for. All right, next pocket we have, it's like an, like a outlet, like a extension thing. What are these things called again? Like, I don't even know, but if you need more outlets, plug this bad boy in, you got three out of one. It's a deal I'll take any day. So next in the same pocket, I don't know why they share the same pocket or the same space because very different objects, but I don't know if these are food covers or shower caps, but if you decide you're going to haze up your room, get a little more atmosphere in your scene and you're worried about the smoke detector going off and you don't want your, your whole shoot to be shut down, essentially, what you could do is put these over top of your smoke detector and it will stop them from going off and stop the haze from going in them. So I'm not sure if it's technically legal. So if anyone asks, you didn't get this idea from me. iPhone cable, just in case you need to charge an iPhone. I never even used my phone on set, so I don't even know what this is for. A pen. Shout out TD Bank. 
to I bank with. Not sure why. I think it's just like a local thing. Like it's a proximity thing. Not necessarily like I love TD Bank. What else we got in here? We have a CFast card reader. Not many people have one of these, so it's always good to have on set, especially since my cameras shoot onto CFast cards. Always have one of these handy so you can dump onto a computer. And then our very last item, something very rare you might have never seen before. It's almost like an ancient product at this point, but just like Apple headphones with the wire, not AirPods. And this is just to monitor the audio of my camera if I need to. So yeah, that's what's in my gear case. And I hope that was enjoyable for you. I know these types of videos are usually like the lowest hanging fruit for someone like me to create, but I always find them satisfying and I hope you found this one satisfying as well. So yeah, thanks for taking the time to watch and I'll link whatever in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching and I love you.